welcome to Celebrating God's Love. I'm Darwin Howard, pastor of the First Cosmopolitan Baptist Church. And as always, we're glad that you've joined us for worship today. It's Easter Sunday morning, and we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Please listen and our message today entitled, This is Not the End. text on this Easter Sunday morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark in the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 7. These are the words of the text. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is, not, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall you see him, as he said unto you. Amen. This is not the end. I was watching television, a drama recently. It was a crime scene investigation series. As time approached for the program to conclude at the end of the hour, it was becoming clear that this mystery would not be solved by the time this episode ended. The lady who had been captured would not be rescued. The criminal who had kidnapped, threatened, tortured, and killed others would not be apprehended by the time the program normally ends. Sure enough, as the clock approached the top of the hour, these words appeared on the screen, to be continued. Normally, this would be the end of the story, but not this time. The plot was too thick. The details were too many. The crook had been too clever to solve this case by the normal one hour designated for the television program. This would require more time, more investigation, more analysis, and more strategizing. It was not the end. It is amazing how the leading character of a television program or a movie can be in a fight, a shooting, an explosion, some catastrophe that you know he or she could not survive, and then from the rubble, bleeding, ribs broken, with a bullet wound, like a phoenix rises from the ashes, the character rises, seriously injured, but alive. You thought this was the end of him. You thought this was the one incident 
that he would not overcome, you thought there's no way that anybody could survive this, this attack, this automobile crash, this explosion, only to see him or her get up and walk away. You realize then that this is not the end. In the scriptures, in Mark chapter 11, Matthew chapter 21, and Luke chapter 19, seven days prior to the day of this text, on what we now refer to as Palm Sunday, Jesus rode a borrowed colt into Jerusalem. And as he entered the city, people gathered to honor him. Crowds lined the streets, laying their clothes and palm leaves on the ground for the donkey on which he was riding to walk on. And they waved palm branches overhead. They cheered as Jesus rode by as if he was royalty, as if he was a king. They shouted, Hosanna, and declared that he was the Messiah who'd come to save God's people. As he entered Jerusalem, Jesus looked over the city and wept for it. There, he chased cheating money changers out of the temple with a whip. Then he taught and responded to the challenging questions of scribes and Pharisees and priests who wanted to discredit him and kill his influence. On Wednesday, the high priest and scribes with the help of Judas, one of Jesus' very own disciples, conspired together devising a plot to kill Jesus. On Thursday, Jesus ate his final meal, his last supper with his disciples, and in doing so instituted the Holy Communion service. That night he was arrested, and by Friday morning Jesus had been tried multiple times, and without incriminating evidence, he was still declared guilty and sentenced to death by crucifixion. He was treated cruelly, to say the least. He was mocked, spit on, and slapped in the face. They plucked hairs out of his beard. He was whipped with 39 lashes. No more, because that's all the law would allow. They pressed thorns into his head. He was made to carry his heavy horizontal beam, cross beam, for his execution up the road called Delarosa, from the court where he was unjustly sentenced to die on a hill called Calvary, where he was crucified between two criminals. There on the cross, spikes were driven through his hands and feet, and while hanging there, a spear was pushed into his side and while he hung there dying, people mocked and jeered him, saying, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. And at the foot of the cross, four soldiers gambled for his robe. At noon, when the sun was at its highest peak in the sky and shone its brightest, Jesus breathed his last breath and died. Then the bright blue sky over Jerusalem turned black as midnight without moon or stars. They removed his body from the cross and Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus' cold, lifeless body in a borrowed tomb. For all practical purposes, it looked like this was the end for Jesus. His ministry of helping the sick and diseased, the underprivileged and the undervalued, the helpless and the hopeless, it seemed had ended. The people's hope that Jesus would lead a revolution 
defy the government's mandates and relieve the people of the burdens forced on them it, it appeared had ended. His disciples' aspirations to be appointed to political office, giving them prominence and power, it appeared had ended. Jesus was dead. Their leader was dead. The one who had stood up to the powers were, was dead. The friend to the poor and the outcast was now dead. The miracle worker was now dead. The crucifixion marked the end of his life and their dreams. Or so they thought. Warren Willsby in his commentary on the Gospels wrote, in a biography, the chapter revealing the death of a person is usually the final chapter written. But this was not the case in the biography of Jesus Christ. For according to the text on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' grave only to find it empty. She was met by a man, an angel actually, who told her that she was looking for Jesus who had been crucified and he continued by saying to her, he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go your way and tell the disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you find him as he said unto you. In other words, Mary, you came expecting to see a dead Jesus, a corpse. You came to see a man who'd reached his end. But Mary, this is not the end. Jesus is very much alive and well. It's not the end. You tell Jesus' disciples to come out of hiding and meet him in Galilee. There they can see him for themselves and see that Calvary was not the end for him. Tell them, Mary, that their lives are not over. Their ministries are not over. Their mission is yet to be assigned and accomplished. Tell them, Mary, to come out of hiding. Tell them that they have no re reason to hide anymore, but there's time now to rejoice. Tell them to lift up their heads and wipe their tears. Tell them that this is the day of rejoicing. This is not the end. The cemetery is a place of endings. But Jesus is not in the cemetery. Look, he said to Mary, see, he is risen. He is not here. The tomb is empty. The grave is the place for the dead, but Jesus is not in the grave because he's not dead. He is alive. He is well. He's on the move. He's gone to Galilee to meet with the disciples. Yes, I know that he died on Friday, but today is Sunday. It's a new day, and the grave is empty, and the empty grave is proof that this is not the end. I hear Jesus as he meets with his disciples in Galilee after his resurrection from the tomb at Jerusalem. They see him. And they see that this is not the end. I hear him saying in Luke's 24th chapter, look at my hands and feet. Touch me. And then he told the disciples to give him some food. And he ate it. You see, it's not over. I'm not dead. I am alive. I am risen. And then in Matthew 28 and verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. It's not the end of the ministry which I began, he said. Go. And teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. This 
is not the end. If it was, I'd just say to you, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Holy Ghost. But I am alive. They should be baptized in my name as well as the Father's and the Holy Spirit. I rose from the grave for them. As I close, I hear the Lord speaking to us today. His voice transcends 2,000 years and he speaks encouraging words. He says, I know you're having difficult times in your life, but you need to understand this is not the end for you. I know that you're sick. I know that you're diseased, but I also know that does not mean that this is the end. I know life is not easy. I understand, Jesus says, it wasn't easy for me. I know that life's not fair, but I do know that this is not the end. I understand people have disappointed you, and I understand that you've grown tired and you've grown weary, but no, my child, Jesus says, this is not the end. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. But put your faith, he says, in him, in Jesus Christ. Put your trust in God. Better days are ahead, Jesus says to us. Regardless of what you see, regardless of what you have heard, this is not the end. Jesus said in Matthew 18 and 20, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I will never leave you. I will never, Jesus says, forsake you. When the world ends, I'll be there with you. But until that time, keep your head up. Keep your hopes up. Stay prayed up. Lift up the name of Jesus because the end has not come yet. This is not the end. You can do that, you know. We can do that because after Jesus was executed on Friday, after he died and was buried in a tomb, early two days later, Early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up and left the grave empty. And that empty tomb was and still is proof that Jesus defeated death. Some say they stole Jesus' body from the grave, but that was impossible. Who would have stolen it anyway? His disciples had run away and were hiding. The bravest friends of Jesus were women who, when they went to anoint his body, asked, who will we get to roll the stone away? They didn't steal his body. Nobody did. He got up and left the grave on his own power. He defeated death. Jesus defeated Satan. He defeated sin. He defeated hell. He defeated his enemies. He left the grave. He arose and was victorious. He was very much alive and well. The words of Alfred Ackley's hymn remind us that Jesus' death on Friday was not the end. He said, I serve a risen Savior. Not I serve a Savior who's still on the cross or not I serve a Savior who's still in the grave. I serve a risen Savior and he's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever others say. I see him. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. The last verse of that song says to us today as it has to Christians in generations past and as it will to Christians 
in generations to come. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ, the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find None other is so loving, so good and kind. And then actually says, he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And as long as he is living in my heart and your heart, we can testify that the end has not come. This is not the end. As long as Jesus lives, it's not the end. As long as Jesus lives, it's not over yet. As long as Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living because he lives. Because Jesus lives, the one who got up from the grave that Sunday morning. Believers will live forever. And because he lives, heaven is our home. And because he lives, there's a mansion prepared there for each of us who believes. Because Jesus lives, we will all meet one day around God's throne. And we will sing praises to God. And we will thank him for the living Jesus Christ. We, the scripture says, will sing songs that the angels cannot sing. Every day will be Sunday and Sabbath will have no end. And all of that is true because Jesus got up from the grave. And for the folks who thought it was all over on Friday, you can join me in saying to them and anybody else who didn't believe that he got up, he still lives and it's not over, and it will not be over ever because we will live with the Lord throughout eternity. He lives. This is not the end. Remind yourself whenever you get down. Remind yourself whenever you are discouraged of the promises of God and of the resurrection of his son, Jesus the Christ. He got up. And he promised you that you can get up too. You can get up from the problems you're going through. And when you do die, he's promised that because you believed in him, the day is coming that you'll get up out of the grave. He's going to wait for you in the sky. And all of us who love the name of Jesus will be caught up and meet him in the air. And knowing that that is the truth, you are to encourage yourself every day in every situation of life. Remind yourself, this is not the end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, in the Father of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. He who gave your only begotten Son. He who was born with an assignment to die at Calvary. Knowing that Calvary was not the end. We rejoice today that he got up from the grave. We sing with the songwriter who said he arose. He arose from the grave. We rejoice. We praise you. We thank you. We glorify your name for victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you this Easter Sunday morning. 
We thank you not only because he got up, but we're grateful because his getting up enables us to get up. It empowers us to get up. His getting up encourages us when we are down that this is not the end. When it seems that we're defeated, it reminds us this is not the end. When things don't go well, when they don't go our way, we're grateful to know that this is not the end. Will you please continue to bless us? Keep us in your care. I pray, Lord, today as on this glorious morning when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, we do it in spirit, even though physically we are not all gathered in the sanctuary, the house of prayer. But we know that this is not the end. The day is coming when we'll gather again. The day is coming when we'll worship together physically as well as spiritually. Keep us, dear Lord. Meet our needs. Answer our prayers. Whatever your children stand in need of, we know you to be a loving father. You've done it before. Please do it again. We pray for our membership. We pray for their families, for those who are sick. We pray for the people with various concerns and problems. We pray because we know that you're a God who has all power. We also know that you're a loving God. And for all of that, we're grateful. Now, Lord, will you forgive us for our sins and help us to live righteously. Help us to be ambassadors to the world for heaven. Oh, Lord, our Lord, we pray in the name of our Redeemer, our Savior. We look forward to joining one day around your throne and singing still, He lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. in the upper room when they ate his last meal. From the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with verse 23, listen closely. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. For if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye may not come together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Deacon McKay will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful that you have allowed us, Father, to witness another Easter. Father, it has been a little over a year now that we've been able to gather in this sanctuary. But Father, while we have not been able to gather here physically, Lord, we have been here spiritually. And Father, we just thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us throughout this past year. We thank you, Father, for last Sunday's broadcast. Father, you gave us an opportunity to see our members, faces and smiles that we have not seen for an entire year. And Father, while some of those faces are no longer with us, we know that they're in heaven with you. And we just ask you, Father, to be with our families and bless them and strengthen them and be with them in the midnight hour. And Father, we ask you to continue to bless our membership. Bless them all, Lord, according to our individual needs. We ask you to bless this church. Bless our pastor and his wife. Strengthen them, Father. Build them up when they're torn down and just be with them throughout. And Father, on this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate your resurrection and we partake in this communion. We ask that each of you, under the sound of my voice, pray your own prayer. Just to make sure, Father, that you're worthy of partaking and breaking this bread and drinking this wine. And before we do so, Lord, we ask you to bless this bread and bless this wine. Father, we ask you to change it from the physical to the spiritual. Lord, we just ask you to bless it so that we may all be worthy. And Father, we ask you to bless us all and just thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do because we have faith, Father, that you'll be with us tomorrow as you were yesterday. Now bless us, Father, on this glorious Easter Sunday. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit, let us eat and drink together.